So the next thing that we're gonna do is set up our next clip, our ability to change clips. So let us return to our script and we're going to add a public function that returns void called set next clip. And it's gonna need a few things. So first of all, it's gonna need some kind of place to get clips from, right? So we're gonna start with a public video clip array called video clips. And what we're gonna do is we are going to set our clip for our player to one of the clips from this array. Uh, and so we're also going to need an index for the array. So we're gonna make a private. And in fact, when I think about it, I think I can just put that, I don't need to actually have a class level variable. I can just put it in here. Uh, int next index. And this is gonna be the, let's call it, what should we call it, video clip index. And what we're going to do is we're going to say video player dot clip equals video clips video clip index. And then for good measure, we'll call video player dot play. This is optional, but I think when you click next clip, you want it to auto play, you want it to start playing. Okay, now the other thing, because we're using an array, right, we don't want to go past the number of clips in our array, which in our demo is gonna be two. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, first of all, um, actually, no, I do need this. Whoops, here, let's actually move this up. Let's move this up here. This is what I get trying to refactor stuff while I'm talking. We're gonna do video clip index plus plus. We're gonna increment the video clip index and then we're gonna say if video clip index is greater than or equal to video clips dot length, meaning we're about to try to access a index in the array that is greater than the length, then we're gonna use set next clip index, no, it's set video clip index to equal video clip index modulo video clips dot length. So we're making effectively a kind of a circular array, right, where it's gonna reach the highest index in the array, and then it's gonna loop back to zero. And the way that it's doing that is with the modulo operator by dividing by the length, but dividing the index by the length, if they're equal, it so the modulo operator returns the remainder, right? So if they're equal, it'll be zero, go back to the zeroth index. Uh, and then if there's a remainder, it will return that. So then we can just use that to circle around our array without exceeding its length then that should be good. So then we just need another little shootable UI script to call this function. And we're gonna make that in our scripts folder. So right click on scripts, create C sharp script, and this will be next button control. And we'll open this up. And this is going to be, this is gonna inherit from shootable UI. And it's going to have a public override shot click. And in this case, it's going to call world space video dot, you guessed it, set next clip. Really simple. Um, and then we need to attach this to the next clip button. Set the reference, which I forgot to do last time. Boom. And we need to set some clips in our array. So we're just gonna drag in, let's drag in Adam first. 
and shader demo video second. Now we can set, we don't really need to do this, but we can set our video clip to none, right? Uh, and it should be ready to go. All right, so play and derp. Nope. What's going on? That works. Switch. Oh, sorry. You know what? We do actually need to have because there's no there's no automatic setting. We'll just have. Actually, let's not do that. We'll just, let's do this the right way. We're going to set this to none. I forget a line of code. We're going to set in our world space video. We're going to in, we'll do it in a way. Uh, let's do it in start. Since we have a start function sitting here, we're going to set video player dot clip to equal video clips zero. There we go. I mean, you could just set it in the inspector as well, but I don't know why somehow this feels cleaner to me have it all controlled in the script so we don't get confused. Play, there we go. Skip, very good. All right, so now, the only other thing that, this is something that I actually asked for a, requested a change to the UX here because I don't like this. Notice that we, well I muted the audio, let's turn the audio back on. The, um, the audio source is not set when the video clip is set to none. So what we need to do is we need to drag in a clip with video and then assign the audio source. Not. There it goes. So yeah, you're going to need to make sure that your audio source is set correctly. So in this case, setting this allows us to set that, but that's something that I'm hoping that they will change because I feel like that's a little, little not super convenient the way that is. So in this case, we just have to drag in a clip with audio, make sure the audio source is assigned. Um, and so I guess in this case, just leave it in there so that we don't lose that assignment. All right, so now we have the ability to change clips. We have our array of clips. Um, we've troubleshot a few little problems there. And so the next stage is going to be hooking up our time controls and our playhead display. So, uh, Alan Matano asks in unity, you can apply a lot of effects to audio. Will it be possible to do the same to video? For example, if the video is dark or needs contrast, et cetera, similar to, whoops, chat's moving, similar to the camera post rendering stack, but that applies only to the video or the video player. So what you would need um, is, I would probably do this with a custom shader, right? Where you would, and I wouldn't be surprised if folks make some custom shaders available, where basically you take in the video as the main texture, apply whatever processing you want in the shader, lighten, darken, Etc. If you're not familiar with writing shaders, you can check out our writing your first shader session that I just published. Um, but you could do all that stuff inside the shader uh, to the video by itself in the material. Uh, Mavel has some suggestions for how to optimize the code. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, sometimes I like to do stuff in multiple lines just for beginners to have it be a little bit more readable, but yeah, that's a good suggestion. Um, yeah, that's the thing you need to, I, I just file the, the main guy who's working on the video stuff is pretty responsive. And so in the course of prepping for this, I made a couple little, uh, UX requests and suggestions. And that audio source thing was one of them. When you're setting stuff programmatically, of course, you could set the audio source via script, right? So we could add to our next clip method, you know, setting of the audio source. But you know, that feels like boilerplate, feels like boiler point that we shouldn't have to write. So he, I think is receptive to that. And hopefully that'll, that'll change as well. I mean, admittedly, this is a still a fairly new um, feature. <laughs> 